Okay, we have finally made it onto the last chapter of Pure Year 2, which is vectors, and this now includes three dimensions. And after that absolute monster of an integration video, I've actually tried to just do it all in one example with five parts. So that's it, it's literally just this one question that we're going to have a look at. It's a pretty straightforward topic because this is essentially the same as the year one kind of skills, except we're now adding in the k vector, which represents the z coordinates. So instead of it normally being like xi plus yj, we're now going to have a vector xi plus yj plus zk. So we've got three dimensional coordinates for this. And so for this particular vector a, which of course, when I write it, I would do it underlined, but when it's typed, I do it in bold. The magnitude of this vector in three dimensions it's basically what you'd expect it to be. It's like Pythagoras, but with just the x, the y, and the z all being squared. And as you know, those um, signs that we have either side of the a, that's sort of like the modulus or the magnitude of a that we have there. And hopefully you've already revised this from year one vectors, but a unit vector is you take the original vector, which is our x, y, z one that we have here. And if you want to make, it, make its magnitude a length of one, you just divide by its current magnitude, which should make sense, right? If the magnitude of a vector is five, if it's five units long, if you divide everything by five, then you're going to end up with something that's a fifth of the length, and it now has a magnitude of unit length, in other words, a length of one. And then this is something that has been added into the specification. I say added in as though you would have known this before, but the specification changed back in, I think, 2018, 2019. And I have never seen them examine the angle with the axes. But they might ask at some point, if you've got a vector, what angle it makes with the coordinate axes. So this would be theta x is the angle that it makes with the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. The x, the y, and the z, they are the different components of the vector. We've got the magnitude of the vector, the modulus of the vector. And it's the cosine of that angle. And it actually comes from a little triangle that you draw. I do cover it in my playlist of videos. So if you want to find out the angle it makes with the x-axis, you do the x divided by the magnitude of the vector. And then obviously you need to do the inverse cos of that to actually find out the size of that angle. So as long as you're good with everything from vectors from year one, this should be pretty straightforward. We're just going to kind of dive in with these questions that we've got here. And then that's all of pure year two. In fact, all of pure summarized for A-level maths. So we have the points a and b with position vectors 3, 2, minus 3. And for b, we have minus i. There's no j, so that will be a 0. And then for k, there is 2. We're going to find the magnitude of a, b. Well, I always, in these questions, I will start off by writing them as column vectors. And I would highly recommend writing vectors as column vectors. It allows you to spot which are the ones that are kind of matching with each other, like the i, the j, and the k. So we have an I, a J, and the K, there's no J for B. It just makes it a lot easier to see everything, whereas when they're written in a list, it can often be hard to spot the ones that are the I's, the J's, and the K's, especially because I and J look so similar. And they do accept this in all mark schemes as well. So I'm going to find the magnitude of AB. Now, hopefully from year one, you remember that to do the vector AB, you do the second letter minus the first letter. So we're going to be doing B minus A to start with. Now, B is our minus one, zero, two. And our a is 3, 2, minus 3. So when I subtract these very carefully, I've got minus 1, minus 3 is minus 4. 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And 2 minus minus 3 is 2 plus 3, which is 5. So if I'm going to find the magnitude of the vector a, b, which we write like this, or you could just write it as a, b in this particular form, I'm just going to do Pythagoras to those values. Now, you could write minus 4 squared. There's just a lot more effort writing that because we know minus 4 squared is just the same as 4 squared. So I'm literally just going to do the 4 squared, the 2 squared, and the 5 squared. Just saves us writing and typing on a calculator because we know uh, that they're going to be the same. So I've got my square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 5 squared, which is 3 root 5. 3 root 5. Okay, then for part B of the question, we're going to find the unit vector of b. So I guess I need to find out the magnitude of b. Remember the unit vector is what we talked about over here, so we definitely need to find its magnitude for the um, for that part we're going to be calculating. So the magnitude of b, well we have 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared, 1 squared. If you don't want to write the 0 squared you don't have to. I don't need the calculator for that, but that's going to be a square root of 5, isn't it? So if I now want to write the unit vector b, it just means it's going to be 1 over the square root of 5 multiplied by the minus 1, the 0, and the 2. If you wanted to write this um, as in, with the 1 over root 5 inside the bracket, you could write it as minus 1 over root 5 
zero and then two over root five. If you wanted to rationalize the denominators, you could rationalize the denominators. If you wanted to write it as I, J and K notation, you could do that. But any of these three answers that we've got here would be accepted. And of course, with it being rationalized denominators as well. And then we're going to do for part C, the angle that A makes with the Y axis to the nearest degree. So for part C of the question, we're going to be finding the angle that it makes of the Y axis. And this is for A. So we know from the formula that cos of theta Y is going to be the Y coordinate divided by the magnitude of A. And that's just from this part that we've got over here. OK. And I'm just going to remind us our A vector is this one up here. So I'm probably going to need to work out the magnitude of A. So it's going to be my square root of a 3 squared, a 2 squared, and a 3 squared. So I'll do, what's that, a 9, a 4, and a 9. That's square root of 22. No simplifying with that. So this means that the cos of theta y, the angle it makes with the y-axis, is going to be something over 22. And what was the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate is 2. So it's the 2 over the square root of 22. So I'll just find out what theta y is. I think I want it in degrees mode. My calculator's in radians, so I'm just going to switch it back to degrees. So I will do 2 divided by the square root of 22. I will do the inverse cos of that answer. I think it wanted it to the nearest degree. It did. So it's 64.76, which is 65 degrees that it makes to the nearest degree. OK, now we're going to have a slightly trickier part for part D and part E. You would never have this many kinds of things in one question, but I decided it would be good to try and squeeze as much as I could in one, one style of question. So for part D of this question, it says the point C has position vector, and I'm going to immediately write it in this column form, 4i plus j plus pk, so we've got 41p. And it says given that AC equals BC, find the value of p. So I know that AC is equal to BC. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually have to figure out what the vector AC is, which is going to be C minus A. So that's our 4, 1, P. And our A vector, so much having to look around for this, it's a 3, 2, and a minus 3. So the only thing that goes wrong in these questions is if you've copied them down wrong. So I'm always checking I've got them copied down correctly. And so we have 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and p minus minus 3 is p plus 3. I'm also going to work out the bc vector, okay? So the bc vector is going to be c minus b, which is 4, 1, p. The b vector is minus 1, 0, and 2, minus 1, 0, and 2. So that is 4 minus minus 1 is 5, 1 minus 0 is 1, and then we have p minus 2. So I now know that the magnitude of this vector is the same as the magnitude of this vector. So I can go straight in and do some sort of big Pythagoras type things here. So I'm going to have the 1 squared, the 1 squared, and the p plus 3 squared. The 1 squared, the 1 squared, and the p plus 3 squared. That's going to be the same as the magnitude of this second vector. So there's going to be the 5 squared, the 1 squared, and the p minus 2 squared. Now I can square both sides to get rid of those square root signs. And here I just have 1 plus 1, which is 2. I'll expand these brackets. This expands to p squared plus 6p plus 9. I'll get rid of that square root sign. I have 5 squared plus 1 squared, 25 plus 1, that's 26. I then have p squared minus 4p plus 4. So the p squareds are going to cancel out. And what I'm going to do is take this minus 4p and add it to the 6p so that I get 10p. And then I'm just going to sort out all the numbers. So the right-hand side is a 26 plus 4. I'm going to subtract the 9 from the left-hand side and the 2, which gives me 19. And so p is either 19 over 10 or 1.9 for that part that we have. So we're now going to do a geometric type of question that we've got here. And it says, given further that the points A, B, C, D form the parallelogram, A, B, C, D, find the position vector of D. Now, this is going to be important. I don't know if this is going to be important. We know that AC is the same as BC. We'll soon figure that out. But we've now got these three positions of A, B, and C. 
and we're going to try and find out where D would be. So I'm probably going to write it over this side of the page. I know it might look a bit confusing. So we've got A, B. This is just a visual, a visualization of what's happening here. It doesn't really need to be drawn accurately because it's three dimensions. So we have these vectors A, B, C, and it says that it's going to form a parallelogram, and the parallelogram is A, B, C, D. Now, when it's written A, B, C, D, it means we need to go in that order around the outside of the parallelogram. So it's going A to B to C. You might say to yourself, oh, I think I could put D over here, because then we have a parallelogram that looks like this but then it doesn't read in the correct order. It goes A, B, D, C. So it can't go in that position. The only place where D can actually go is if it follows around A, B, C, D. It has to go down here for this. So let me just draw that in for D like this. And we've got that these are the sides of the parallelogram like this. And I want to try and figure out how I'm going to get to that coordinate for D. Now, the way my brain sees it, and there are many, many ways of seeing this, is I think, oh, well, I'm starting off at A and I'm going down in this direction to get to D. But this vector from here to here is the same as this vector from B to C. So the vector from A to D is equivalent of the vector from B to C. And the reason that's true is because in a parallelogram, these are parallel to each other, so they are in the same direction, and they are the same length as each other. So they just must be the same vector. If they've got the same length and the same direction, they must be the same vector. So I'm gonna describe how do I get to the position vector D. Well, I'm gonna start at the position vector A, and I'm gonna add on that AD vector, but actually, Instead of AD, we've just said that's the same as BC. And I'm actually even going to say that BC, I think we've already worked it out earlier on, didn't we? BC, we did work out earlier on, it was over here. Or we could say that it's the same as C minus B, because we know that BC is that. But I think we've actually worked it out earlier on. And we worked it out earlier on, it was 5, 1. It was 5, 1 and P minus 2. Well, that's 1.9 minus 2. Okay, so the last thing is just to figure out all of these parts. So A, making sure I copy this down right, is 3, 2, and minus 3. 3, 2, and minus 3. And we're going to be adding on to it the BC vector, which is the 5, the 1, and the minus 0 0.1. So our vector for the D is here. 3 plus 5 is 8. 2 plus 1 is 3. And minus 3 plus minus 0 0.1 is minus 3.1. So how did it ask for it? It said find the position vector of D. So we found the position vector of D. If it said to find the coordinates of D, we would obviously write it as 8, 3 and minus 3.1. If we wanted to, we could write it as 8i plus 3j minus 3.1k if it asked for it as a position vector, either of these two things, the column vector or the ijk would be perfectly fine for this. So you've made it through. You've done all of hopefully your revision for A-level maths. You finished up with a slightly easier one rather than that integration one, which was obviously very full of information. Um, I've been mentioning at the end of most of these videos that if you are interested in applying to a scholarship that I've created, the Bison Maths Award, do go and check out the video that is linked in the description. Um, it is going to be closing at the end of January 2025, but if you're watching this video beyond January 2025, do go and check because I'm hoping to have this uh, scholarship running each year, so it might be something that is still available to you. Anyway guys, wishing you the best of luck with all of your studies. I'm sure you're doing this in preparation for, for some exams, so good luck and I hope to see you in another video soon.